11 or 12 years ago when I was a wedding photographer but I hadn't yet started f-stoppers I tried to calibrate one of my monitors and it was the biggest disaster of my career it took forever to do first of all but then when it was finished the monitor looked horrible it looked way worse than it did before but to make matters worse it wasn't consistent through different applications so maybe Photoshop was calibrated but then when I would open the same image in Internet Explorer or one of the picture viewers on Windows, it would look completely different. So I decided to revert back and turn this off and I could not figure out how to do this. I know it sounds insane. I'm pretty good with computers. I could not figure it out. I went as far as trying to do the system restore setting with Windows to revert back to the way my computer was a few days before. That failed as well. I ended up having to completely wipe the computer and do a fresh install of Windows to get back to my uncalibrated monitor. Since that point, I have sworn that I would never color calibrate a computer or monitor again just because it's more trouble than it's worth and I don't wanna risk bricking a computer again. But Data Color just reached out and they said that they wanted to sponsor a video where I color calibrate one of my computers. I wanna keep this fun and entertaining for you guys and so I thought I would do this live on camera and we'll see if this is truly the fastest and easiest way to color calibrate a monitor or am I going to brick a computer all over again and spend days trying to recover it? Let's find out. All right, let's see what is in the box here. All right, here's the color calibrator itself and my serial number. That is literally all that is in the box. Let's see. Download your software at blah, 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 blah. Let's type this in. Now, real quick, before we get into calibrating this, I wanted to tell you which monitor I'm going to be using. This is the Dell U2718Q. This is a 4K IPS monitor. I love this monitor. I have two of them side by side. It is incredible as it is right out of the box. I'm interested to see what the color calibrator will do. I would imagine probably one of the biggest changes is just changing the brightness level. And I believe this color calibrator can change the brightness level depending on the amount of ambient light in the room. So right now we have video lights and everything set up for this. I'm going to have to do this again once I move back over to my desk and set the light over there. But for the sake of this video, I just wanted to have one monitor. I wanna make this super clean, super simple. I do appreciate that they just send you to a website because I no longer own a computer with a CD-ROM, so that would not have been helpful. All right, there's two different types of Spider X's. They have sent me the Elite, so I'm going to click on Windows software because I use Windows. Just installing this is bringing back so many horrifying memories of having all the colors be whacked out on my computer and not being able to fix it. I'm starting to remember what that felt like and uh, I am hoping that the Spider X also does not destroy my computer. All right, so the software is telling me that I need to plug the sensor into the USB. Easy enough, let's do that. All right, it's asking for a serial number that's on the bottom of the inside of the box. All right, let's click calibrate my displays. Warm up, have you allowed your display to warm up for a half hour? Yes, I have. Lighting conditions, have you checked that no intense lights are falling directly on your display screen? Sorry, we gotta make a video here. So I'm gonna hit yes. Display controls, have you reset your monitor settings? Let's check. Okay, everything is Set back to factory settings, spider connection. Plug the spider into a USB port, not into a hub or keyboard. Okay, next, desktop. It's pretty cool, you can still do laptops or projectors. I do have a projector as well, but today we're gonna be doing desktop, next. Okay, it seems to have recognized that we're using a Dell monitor. And uh, enter the desktop display model. So I'm just going to Type that in there and hit next. All right, this has a brightness setting. So at this point it's asking me what type of monitor we have. I believe this is a wide gamut uh, LED monitor. So we're gonna choose wide LED and hit next. We definitely want a step-by-step -step assistant because I have no faith in myself. 
The other interesting thing about the Spider X Elite, which is what we have here, is it has this studio match feature, which allows you to match all of the different displays that you have in an office or studio. If this is a success, then this is what I'm going to use to get all of the monitors that we have here to all look the same. But for right now, we're just going to be using the step-by-step -step assistant. When it comes down to gamma, white point brightness, I don't even know what to choose here, but it does say recommended. So we're just gonna go with the recommended options and hit next under full calibration. Place the spider on the desk as shown, okay. Make sure you have no intense light falling directly on your display screen. So as I expected, it says the room light is very high, this level is not recommended, you may want to use a monitor hood, and that's because we're on a video set here with big video lights all over the place. I'm still going to do this uh, just to see that it works correctly, and then I will have to recalibrate once I move over to my real desk. So let's place this there. I think we open this up and hang it over the monitor. As I expected, I like my monitor way too bright. And this is a problem for all photographers. If you've ever edited a photo and then you've tried to print it out every time, it looks darker in print. And that's because 99% of us have our monitors too bright. Monitors come too bright out of the box. And it's a little more pleasant to look at a bright monitor, especially if you're in a bright room, but it's not accurate for printing. And especially when you get into the shadows, you might see all this detail in Photoshop, and then when you print, it just looks black. This is what's going to fix that. So I'm going to have to come in here now and manually lower my brightness to get it into this little green zone on the screen here. So I'm making changes on the monitor and then just hitting this update button. And there we go, we're right in the middle of the green area and I'm going to click continue and more colors. I have to say, if this is the actual progress bar, this is infinitely faster than the last time I tried to do this. It was so slow and the other crazy thing is, they were recommending that I do it every month because apparently monitors can change over time as they start to wear out, the colors change. So they want you to do this all the time. And if it takes 10 or 20 minutes to color calibrate a monitor, you're not going to do it. Okay, it's acting like it's done. That was a little too easy. <laughs> Congratulations, your new profile has been created and your system will automatically use this new profile. Okay, next. Oh, look at that. Okay, so I can hit the switch button here and it shows me what all of these images look like uncalibrated and calibrated. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this in the screen record, but specifically, when I look at some of these images that have a lot of colors in them, the colors are changing significantly. This is a way bigger difference than I thought. Overall, especially when I look at the white tones around the screen, it seems like the calibrated image has a little bit more magenta. The uncalibrated monitor looks a little bit more green. But the most impressive difference here is in these colors, especially these very vibrant colors. And this is what I've noticed a lot about newer monitors. Everything is larger than life and, and way too saturated. The new calibrated profile is much more muted. And again, I feel like that's probably a lot more realistic as to what it will actually print like. Okay, look, I can zoom in. So I can look at this church 
And again, I don't know that you guys are going to be able to see this, but the sky specifically over this church here, it is like a completely different color. The colors that I'm looking at on these images look normal. I mean, they're different. They're certainly different, but it's not out of whack like it was the last time I attempted to do this over a decade ago. But the moment of truth for me is going to be opening up images that I know I took and I edited recently. And then I want to open them in Photoshop. I want to open them in web pages. I want to open them in different programs. And I want them to look the same in every single program. That's what really killed this entire thing for me the last time I attempted this. Because every time I open an image and something else in Windows, it looked completely different. All right, so here is a landscape photo that I took recently. We released this in a video uh, we did for the Polar Pro filter a week or so ago. Now I have to say, just from memory, this photo looks similar, but it does look a little bit more muted than it did before I calibrated. It's very interesting. And I know you guys can't see this, but I'm working off of a laptop right here, and this is just a duplicate monitor. This monitor is calibrated, but the laptop monitor is not. And I can see a massive difference in these two monitors here. The Dell laptop monitor is extremely vivid and too vivid. I knew, I knew this. When you, when you open up these new laptops and they just, all the colors are exploding, it looks cool. It's larger than life, but it's the opposite of accurate. So this is very interesting to see this because I probably want my print to be somewhere in between these two. I feel like that's way too saturated. This might be a little undersaturated, but if I sent this file to print, this is actually what it's going to come back and look like, or that's at least what it should come back and look like. And so I may want to add a little bit of saturation or vibrance to this before sending it to print. Now let's go ahead and open it up in Photoshop and see what it looks like. Now, when I did this before and I had so much trouble with the different programs looking different, I assume that was a Windows issue. When back then I was probably on Windows XP or Windows 7. I'm hoping that Windows 10 has improved this. This is very, very close side by side. I also put this picture on Facebook. Okay, now everybody knows when you upload a file to Facebook, they absolutely destroy the file. So the colors are gonna be a little bit different and of course this image looks freaking blurry on Facebook, but let's see what these look like side by side. Because I'm telling you, when I did this before, it was night and day difference. That's pretty close. That is pretty close. I can't believe it. It actually worked. Technology has gotten better in the last decade, and calibrating your monitor is no longer an absolute nightmare. It only takes a couple of minutes and uh, made some pretty significant changes. I knew the biggest change was probably going to be screen brightness, but I was really shocked to see how much this software changed individual colors. You can tell that this wasn't just lowering the saturation overall. This was fine tuning each individual color. All right, let's see how much these cost. So the Spider X Pro is 170 bucks. That's actually cheaper than I thought. The Elite version, which is the one that we have here, is 270 bucks. So I've spent a few minutes reading about the differences between the Spider X Pro and the Spider X Elite. That's the one that we have here. One of the things is it has calibration targets for motion work. So if you're shooting for cinema, this is the one you're going to want to use. The other thing that really stands out to me is if you have multiple monitors or a studio with multiple computers and monitors, you're probably going to want the Elite as well. So this Elite version has a display matching in studio feature and it defines a studio standard for all displays to be matched. So this is gonna be great for us because we probably have at least 10 or 12 monitors around this house and we're constantly switching computers. So with this feature, we're gonna be able to calibrate everything and have every monitor look the exact same. And then visual tuning for side-by-side -side display match. As you guys know, I am a dual monitor guy. I can't imagine going back to a single monitor. So I have another one of these at my real desk over there. And uh, I'm gonna be using this feature to make sure that they look equivalent side-by-side. -side. So who is this product for? I don't think it's for everyone. I, I really don't. And even though this is a sponsored video, I'm sure Data Color would agree. If you're the type of photographer who's just sharing your work online, most people viewing your work have overly bright, overly saturated monitors themselves. And so if your monitor's oversaturated, that's great because you're gonna see what they see. But 
If you're printing your work and you want it to look like it does on the computer screen when you actually hold it in your hand, you're going to need something like this to keep everything calibrated. So I'm relieved to say that data color was right. It actually is easy to color calibrate your monitor these days. It does not brick your computer. If you've been thinking about getting into this, check out the Spider X. I can't really imagine it getting much easier than this. For more content just like this, head over to fstoppers.com. And if you'd like to check out our full-length photography tutorials, head over to fstoppers.com slash store.